My name is Adam and this is Cattle Dog Rock. How are we doing today everybody? Adam here with Cattle Dog Garage. It's been about a week since my last video. I've been laid up for a little while. In this video we're going to go over this engine right here in a little more detail and explain why things were done a certain way and what could have been done differently and what those changes would have resulted in. Also, I encourage you to watch my first video and I would appreciate if you guys would like, share, and subscribe. Let's get on with it. The information I'm about to give you is by no means engine building gospel. And I'm not claiming to know everything, but I've been researching engines for more than 20 years and have learned from some of the best and most innovative builders of horsepower. So take this information for what you think it's worth. I'm still going to keep all this rather simple. I don't want to get too deep for people that are still trying to figure all this stuff out. This is a 383 cubic inch small block Chevy. It's got a scat forge crank, scat H-beam rods, diamond forge flat top pistons. The rotating assembly has been balanced. The heads are 186 camel humps that have been fully ported. Um, fully ported for lack of a better term. I actually hate that term. It's like when people say, oh, my, my engine's fully built. Well, all right, well, what, is, what does that mean? Anyway, back to the point. Even with those heads having 60 plus hours of just grinding alone, um, plus flow bench testing, I'm still leaving horsepower on the table with these. These heads are definitely maxed out on their ability to support higher horsepower, to say the least. A set of good aftermarket aluminum heads would better suit this engine. Something like this needs a head around 220cc intake runners, preferably ported. For the cubic inches and horsepower and the RPM requirements of 383, making peak power around 6,500 RPMs and needing to be revved about 1,000 RPMs above peak power without the horsepower completely just falling off dramatically. This head would be much more comfortable supporting around 450 to 500 horsepower, preferably on a 355. You could actually achieve better results with ported Vortec heads versus these 186s. When I had built this engine, I was on a budget. My dad had these heads from when he had his machine shop. He had done all the work on these heads and the person never came back to pick them up. So when my dad shut his machine shop down, he still had these heads. And when I went to build this engine, I bought them from him for $300. These things are definitely the limiting factor of this engine. This engine still dominated the competition and still happily sang the music of my people all the way up to 7,500 RPMs. This just goes to show you that a properly executed combo, even on a budget, can be more than competitive. Little pause for a second. This is just proof right here that goes to show you what you can do with a properly set up small block Chevy making around 550 horsepower. Each one of these events had about 150 trucks in four classes running for the best time or distance. The first year, I had 37 inch tires in one. Second year, I upgraded horsepower, got 47 inch tires and ran the 40 and up class one. Same thing. And then the last year, my truck broke, and that was just in one run. Yeah, and some of the trucks had big blocks as big as 540 cubic inches. So the competition was stiff. All right, we'll go back to the engine. The heads being ported weren't the only reason this thing makes power, or makes the power that it does. Um, the chambers have been reworked. The valves have been unshrouded. The cylinder walls were actually unshrouded. It has a 12.96 to 1 compression ratio, and that takes 110 octane. The rockers are 1.6, so that effectively makes lift um, about 650 thousandths. The cam specs are 620 lift, 248 degrees duration at 50 thousandths. It's on a 108 degree lobe separation angle with a 104 degree intake center line. 
It's a solid roller. The valve train has been set up to prevent valve flow, running at higher RPM than the cam was intended to. The whole reason I set up a bog slash drag engine like this is when you're doing a thousand RPM beyond peak power, um, for one, you get more tire speed. And for two, the engine, if it does start loading up, you fall back into peak power and it's less likely to bog the engine down. Setting up engine like this has proven successful for me, even against big blocks that have 150 plus cubic inches on me. The intake on this thing is a ported Performer RPM air gap. It's a dual plane, obviously. I chose this ported uh, air, RPM air gap for the simple fact that you have way, way more mid-range torque. And that's what gets those big tires turning off the line. When you start getting up into the higher RPM, the ported RPM air gap proceeds to breathe as if it thinks it's a single plane manifold. And then once again, effortlessly and happily, we'll proceed to sing the music of my people all the way to 7,500 RPMs. When I had first built this engine, it had originally had a, um, a hydraulic flat capped cam in it. Uh, it was a 292 comp Magnum cam that spec'd out at a uh, 501 thousandths lift. The duration is 242 at 50 thousandths, and that's on a 110 degree lobe separation angle. Um, it made power between 2,500 and six, or yeah, 2,500 and 6,500, and that happily did 7,500 RPM. It probably only made about 500 horsepower, maybe a little more. That was still a pretty nice combo. That just wasn't violent enough for what I was looking for. So originally had a 750 CFM Mighty Demon carburetor on it. Um, when I had changed the camshaft to the solid roller, I changed the carburetor too to an 850 Race Demon. And that also helped wake it up a little more. Honestly, I think it would have made the best power with a carb around 1,000 CFM. And I would have loved to put a set of um, AFR Brodix heads that were ported on this thing. It probably would have made closer to around 600 horsepower. You could achieve similar results as this combo with uh, ported Vortec heads. Um, David Visard has really good videos on Vortec heads. And if you're interested in learning how to build power and port cylinder heads, um, Vortex and Dart Iron Eagle S heads, heads are great heads for budget engine builder. And when properly done, can be rather impressive. The best deal in small block Chevy cylinder heads, I think, is the Summit Racing cast iron head. You get that for around $350 a piece. And they're actually Dart Iron Eagle S S heads, which in bare form actually sell for more than $500 on Summit and Jags. Um, the Summit heads too come with manly stainless steel valves and Comp 981 valve springs, which are perfect for most flat tappet cams under 520 thousandths lift. And the only downfall is the dart heads on the exhaust seat have about 125 thousandths ledge that makes the exhaust throat measure um, 1.220, which is actually only 76% of the valve diameter, which is rather bad. Just taking that um, 125 thousandths ledge out and blend in the valve job makes the makes a huge difference and you don't have to be a pro you just need to have the right tools and have a little competence and know how to set up valve springs and the valve spring height afterwards and just be careful of hitting the valve seat you could also get rid of the cast finish in the exhaust port and smooth it out and just just don't remove a bunch of material if you don't really know what you're doing um, on the intake, you can do a couple simple things like open up the throat a little. Um, 86 to 91 percent. 91 is about as far as you want to go. Clean up the port a bit, like all the casting and on the inside and stuff. You could um, don't smooth it out. Leave it fairly rough. You could either leave it in a bird finish or like a an 80 grit cartridge roll finish. If you have a set of old valves that fit inside the head, you can unshroud the valves and you can clean up the chambers and get rid of sharp edges and smooth the chambers out nice. And when you're all done with that, um, you have a head that can easily support 450 horsepower from these simple mods without even having a flow bench. For those that are interested, I will go over how to build a 400 to 450 horse uh, small block Chevy Torque Monster street engine. And I'll go over my 450 horsepower 383 build in my truck in detail. So those that kind of want to follow it can go ahead. For now, I hope I give you a little bit to think about. I would really appreciate it if you liked, share, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Adam with Cattle Dog Garage. Thank you for listening. I'll see y'all next time.